Hello and welcome to e-lecture series of Pharma Ignite. This is Bhumisha, Assistant Professor, LJ Institute of Pharmacy, Pharmaceutical Chemistry Department. Today we will discuss in detail about translation process. Biosynthesis of protein or a polypeptide chain in a living cell that is referred to as translation process. The whole translation process that involves a five different different steps requirement gathering, activation of amino acid, actual protein synthesis, protein folding and post translation modification. So first requirement gathering, total six components are needed for protein synthesis, amino acid, ribosomes, mRNA, tRNA, protein factors and energy factor. Okay. Now let us discuss all this factor in detail. Amino acid. Total we have 20 different amino acid for protein structure. Among them 10 are essential and 10 are non-essential. Essential means uh, that is not synthesizing within our body but we need to supply them from diet. Next is ribosome which is the center or we can say factory for protein synthesis and each ribosome have two subunit bigger one and smaller one plus in case of prokaryote ribosome have two side a side and p side while in case of eukaryote ribosome have three side a side p side and e side now what is the role of this side that is the most important part for the translation process a side that is for attachment of amino acyl tRNA while P site that is for peptidyl tRNA and E site that is for exit. Now mRNA a genetic information of M, uh, DNA which is transformed to uh, mRNA in a form of codons and that is actually translate into a protein sequence. So that is the most important role of mRNA. Same way tRNA which is having anticodon. tRNA have three nucleotide base sequence which serves as an anticodon. Right? And so that will recognizing the codon presence over mRNA for the protein synthesis. Now this tRNA they carry amino acid and hand them over to the growing peptide chain okay the amino acid they covalently bound with the tRNA at 3 dash position now we know structure of tRNA in that structure we have CCA nucleotide base sequence at the 3 dash end and to that sequence this amino acid covalently bind for whole this translation process they need energy and that energy is supply from ATP and GTP. Uh, same as transcription process. In that transcription process we have sigma factor, rho factor for initiation, elongation and termination. Same way for this translation process we need protein factor. Same for initiation, elongation and termination. Now a second step includes activation of amino acid that means how we can form this amino acyl tRNA. Amino acid initially with the help of enzyme amino acyl tRNA synthetase. Amino acid and this enzyme form a complex with the help of ATP. That complex then after reacts with tRNA. Here you can see in case of tRNA we have CCA nucleotide sequence at 3 dash end. And so to that end from this complex amino acid can easily bind. So this amino acyl tRNA is then utilized for the translation process. Now our third step the actual protein synthesis. Here you can see this is our ribosome molecule one is bigger part other one is smaller part so that is a two unit of ribosome and in that you can easily find out a side and p side this is 
prokaryotic translation process uh, in case of eukaryote within that area only we have e site further third site that is exit site okay now here you can find easily p site to that p site initiation methionin that is going to attach now for actual protein synthesis the formed amino acyl trna with in our second step that is added at a site then after in a next step this amino acyl trna move from a site to p site by forming peptide bond between methionine and amino acid with the help of enzyme peptidyl transferase right so that a2 binding trna moves from a site to p site by forming peptide bond then after the trna which is attached to methionine that is transferred to e site and that is leave that trna is leaved or that process is called translocation first reaction of amino acyl trna then formation of peptide bond so peptidyl transferase and then third translocation removal of trna so by this you have peptide bond one peptide bond then add one more amino acid means follow one two and three number step right with a a three amino acid then further follow this three step with more amino acid so by repeating this one two and three step we have more numbers of peptide bond that means a polypeptide chain then after if over mrna a termination codon comes so that will stop this protein synthesis and ultimately gives us a peptide a growing peptide which is not the actual protein which we have uh, using in our biological function it is inactive and as we all know protein have four structure primary secondary tertiary and quaternary tertiary and quaternary structure have three dimensional conformation so this is our third or uh, fourth step protein folding a uh, majority of protein can attain a correct conformation only through a uh, certain protein that protein is known as chaperon chaperon is a heat shock protein which facilitates and we can say favors the interaction of the polypeptide surfaces and ultimately gives you a specific conformation of protein so that is called as protein folding means you are converting your synthesized polypeptide chain into their proper conformation 3d arrangement then next a last step post translation modification same as our transcription the initially formed copy of protein which is not the active one not the functional one after so many modification which are the modification folding proteolytic cleavage intrin splicing chemical modification convert that polypeptide into the functional protein one okay so that is all about whole translation process now where this translation process is useful that is useful for uh, uh, understanding a mechanism of various antibiotic means to uh, understand or identify a drug molecule to overcome that disease state for example if we have bacterial or viral infection and we want to prevent their growth so at that time by inhibit uh, using this inhibitors of translation process that will inhibit the translation of bacterial and viral protein synthesis that means you are inhibiting that growth of that bacteria and virus but you are not affecting host cell reason behind that is bacterial and host cell translation process are different so by inhibiting bacterial synthesis you won't affect your cell translation process okay so example is streptomycin tetracycline chloramphenicol erythromycin this all are the class of antibiotic they interferes in a protein synthesis 
i hope you enjoy this lecture if you find any query you can comment below the lecture you can find the series of lecture in our youtube channel pharma ignite once again thank you